Hello, fantastic beast fans. Will Maledictus be Nagini, or will she turn on Credence and devour him like the serpent in Aesop's fable? Perhaps, but I've got a different theory regarding the snake-raven pairing. I just need to do a bit of setup to get there. I'm Susan Chappelle with Fantastic Secrets Behind Fantastic Beasts to bring you the clues. Join me and other Fantastic Beast fans here on the Beast Chaser Forum as we uncover the secrets, discover what's coming first, and play along with Rowling's newest game. So it seems I'm on an old musical kick. Last video, I showed you clips from bed knobs and broomsticks. Now let's go in a totally different direction from around the same time period. <laughs> The musical hair had everyone singing about the age of Aquarius. I'm wondering if Rowling might be hinting at the dawning of the age of the Akami, or perhaps the Corvus. Although the musical hair was before my time, this song was popular for years afterward. It refers to the dawning of a new zodiac age, when wars will end and peace will reign. It's a utopian desire that has its basis in astrology. Because of a wobble in Earth's rotation on its axis, the constellation which the sun rises against on the horizon at the spring equinox changes every 2,160 years and does a complete course through the 12 of the zodiac every 26,000. The movement is backward or opposite the course of the sun on the ecliptic. This is called the precession of the equinoxes or axial precession. Each epoch of 2,000 years is referred to as the age of that reigning constellation. For the last 2,000 years, we were in the age of Pisces. Now, we're either in or approaching the age of Aquarius, depending on which astrologer you consult. And each age is considered to be characterized by the constellation which rules, kind of like Generation X or Millennials, but on a much grander scale. For our purposes, it doesn't matter that astrologers cannot agree on when the age of Aquarius begins because Rowling has created a magical zodiac of her own. In the French Ministry of Magic, we get a beautiful representation of constellations based on magical creatures depicted in a universal sphere, even though we only see part of it. But when you zoom in, something curious emerges which hints that this is not pure artwork. Look here, see these numbers? I'm no astrologer, but I think those are ecliptic degrees, points along the imaginary circle of the sun against the constellations, which is very interesting because these degrees are used to track the movement of the zodiac over the course of time. They're also used in composing natal charts, an astrological projection for an individual based on the moment of their birth. Here's a chart showing the magical creature and its ecliptic degree that I've been able to make out. Streeler, zero, Nundu, 20, Mertlap, 40, Niffler, 60, Centaur, 80, Doxy, 90, Belay, 110. This is French for broom, but more on this one in the next video. Hippocampus, 120, Mooncalf, 350, and Dragon at 360 whereas the Muggle Zodiac has constellations paced about every, every 30 degrees apart, the Magical seems to be based every 20. And is it a mistake that Dragon 360 comes before Streeler 0, or is the Magical one magically enlarged? Based on this spacing, it seems to me that Rowling's Magical Zodiac is missing around 10 more signs for a possible total of 20. 
Even in the days before Harry Potter, Rowling had an active interest in astrology. She worked up natal charts for friends, and a couple of these have even come up for sale since she became famous. Although astronomy was a course at Hogwarts, and we heard a bit about astrology from the centaur for Rins, I believe it may play a much more active role in Fantastic Beasts, and the French Ministry Magic Zodiac hints at how. Perhaps the lunoscope Newt offered Narak in the first movie was our first hint. A lunoscope would come in handy for charting which phase the moon is in for determining a particular natal chart. This is a theory I initially hesitated in posting because it echoes some themes that I've been working into a couple of my own novels for a few years now so I don't know if I'm seeing things because they're on my own mind. However, I've already touched on one aspect of this theory in a prior video from August of last year. You might want to check it out first, link to above and in the description below. In this prior video, I mentioned an ancient mystery religion I thought might be connected to Jacob. Mystery religions, or schools as they were sometimes called, were secret gatherings of seekers after spiritual truth, and there were several of them. With Jacob, I saw hints of the Eleusinian mysteries, but the new trailer made me think of a different school, Mithraism. The Eleusinian mysteries lasted almost 2,000 years, included both male and female initiates, with some of the celebrations held in the open. Mithraism, however, was held underground, and it seems only males could participate. Initiates gathered in underground chambers, called Mithrae, for rituals and feasts. The Mithrae were usually rectangular, had vaulted ceilings, and benches lined the sides where the members could recline and eat. The focus wall was dominated by a sculpture, painting, or relief of their main myth, the slaying of the bull by Mithras. This whole setting reminds me a bit of this one, don't you think? Although Mithras is originally a Persian god of light and truth, in ancient Rome, Mithraism was practiced differently. Little is known about exactly what these mysteries composed because they were, you know, secret, but one theory now believes their primary myth depicted the procession of the equinoxes. This image of Mithras slaying the bull is called the Tarachtony. In it, certain animals are always represented. Besides the bull, there is a dog, snake, raven, and scorpion. Each of these animals represents a constellation in the spring equinox ecliptic during the prior age of Taurus. The bull represents Taurus, the dog is Canis Minor, the snake Hydra, the raven Corvus, and the scorpion, of course, Scorpio. Note, too, that the relief on the left is bordered with scenes from the zodiac. So according to this theory, the panels depict the transition from the age of Taurus, which had ruled the ancient world for over 2,000 years, to the new rising age of Aries. Thus, the initiates of Mithras were secret witnesses to the power of their god to kill the old world and shift the heavens into a new world order. Mithras held the power to move the universe. In the Crimes of Grindelwald trailer, We've been shown a raven and a snake and a magical constellation. On IMDb, we have three acolytes, another name for initiates of the mystery schools. To me, all this builds to that unusual scene of what appears to be a secret gathering with Grindelwald and Rosier standing atop an ancient spherical dais. We'll deal with these one by one. First, the raven and the snake. As we saw in the trailer, Credence's birth name is Corvus, meaning raven or crow, and he comes from a whole line of Corvuses. Corvi? I also showed in an earlier video how Rowling used black feather imagery at the end of FB1 when Credence blew up. Credence appears to be quite friendly with Maledictus, who Mina Lima makes clear in this image is the snake girl. So we have two links to two key constellations, the Corvus and the Hydra the water snake. To the Babylonians, Corvus was sacred to the god of storms, and we definitely saw Credence create a huge one in FB1. Corvus is usually shown perched on the back of the Hydra, along with Crater, or Cop. One theory states that they were considered symbols of death and guarded the entrance to the underworld. 
Next, three characters called Acolytes are listed on IMDb. When the first one was listed, played by Alexandra Ford, it caught my attention. But then a second and even a third appeared. I can't imagine there'd be a big church scene that requires three acolytes. However, initiates into the mystery religions were called Misties or acolytes. An acolyte would pledge secrecy to the mystery school, then advance in degrees as they learned the secrets that brought them enlightenment. In Mithraism, there were seven degrees, and we know how Rowling loves seven, with the first called, get this, the crow or corax. Which leads me to a scene where these elements seem to all come together. Grindelwald stands on a circular stone dais in an ancient amphitheater, which is even referred to as an amphitheater in the casting list on IMDb. It seems to be closed in, with light streaming in from above. In the upper regions, there are two bird statues, and in the crowd directly to the left of Grindelwald is a soldier-like guard and a Hitler look-alike. To me, that dais looks strikingly similar to an ancient celestial sphere, or map of the cosmos, with Grindelwald dead center staking his claim as the center of the new universe. Furthermore, the orb which Rosier is holding, which I thought at first might link to a recording of the breeding experiments with Credence, I now think might project a model of the magical zodiac, or perhaps a prophecy of a particular natal chart. Could it be either Grindelwald's or Credence's? Whatever is happening here, I believe Grindelwald is using the orb to persuade the secret gathering that time is ripe for change and he is the one to make it happen. There's another god often linked to or equated with Mithras, Faunus, the Greek god of creation and new life. By some accounts, Faunus was born of Nyx, the goddess of night, in her black bird form. He's a dying rising god believed by the initiates of another mystery religion, Orphism, to impart the secrets of reincarnation. In Faunus and the Cosmic Egg, a snake wraps its coils around the winged god, born of the egg he stands on, in turn standing within the Cosmic Egg that births a new creation. All around him are the 12 symbols of the zodiac. This is rebirth or reincarnation, all from the union of the snake and bird god, and we've had two hints of this pairing already in Fantastic Beasts, from the egg of the snake bird Akami to the pose of Maledictus and her closeness with Credence. If I'm right about this, here are a few other intriguing hints that could play a role. One of the common representations for Aquarius was a lad named Ganymede. He was so handsome that Zeus, in the form of an eagle, abducted him and brought him to Olympus to serve as his lover and cupbearer. Ganymede was from Troy, descended from the river god Scamander. He was often pictured with the Phrygian cap and is posed here very similar to Mithras. Another detail I've been pondering since the Nicholas and Perinel Flamel in the ballroom video is this curious picture of a woman with a seahorse hairpin. Then, look here, Notice the seahorses in the bottom part of the magical zodiac. They're part of the sea setting around what looks like a family of mermaids. Or, since it's recently been announced that we have a character named Melusen, played by Olwen Ferrer, I'm wondering if they might be the half-fish, half-women of folklore called Melusen, and if this woman in the ball might be one of them. Finally, I've been thinking about this symbol next to Lita's mom ever since I examined the Lestrange family tree in a prior video. And now that we know Lorena Kama is cast, I'm even more curious to figure out what it means. I've got three guesses, a spider web, a pompous rose, or a star. A spider web could hint that she's an animagus. Or we've seen a compass rose before with Newt. In ancient times, they were used by sailors to determine the dominant wind which could be a link to the storm of the Obscurus. If it's a star, it could link her to a constellation, or maybe something entirely different. What do you think? We know the Fantastic Beast series will span 19 years, 
may be the same number of constellations in the magical zodiac. We know it'll include Grindelwald's rise to power and a massive worldwide wizarding war. But what exactly will this all look like? Grindelwald, I'm sure, believes it'll look like him. We know he's a charismatic leader. He's sure of his mission, that he is liberating the wizarding world. Perhaps he even considers he has the divine right to reorder the universe. And will the raven and the snake be elements of the old world that must be destroyed? Or will he use them to stake the legitimacy of his new regime? While I think during the next few film, films, the loyalty and nature of Credence and Maledictus will appear ambiguous and they will probably shift back and forth. I think in the end, as the Corvus always rides on the tail of the Hydra snake, their magical powers will unite to help defeat Grindelwald. Probably, unfortunately, as their final dying or resurrecting act. If we're heading into an astrological minefield, I expect we'll see more centaurs. In fact, maybe we've seen an actor announced already. Spectrum might possibly work. I'll be honest with you, though. Astrology is not my thing. While researching this theory, I found many connections between various constellations that could be linked to the film but I only wish to touch the highlights to give a sense of where this may be heading. If anyone else out there has a strong grasp of astrology and would like to delve in this more, please share what you find in the comments. One last point. I expect most of this would play out in subtext, which would make it tricky to catch. Like with Harry Potter, Rowling gave brief nods to the concepts of alchemy, which underpinned her series, but for every hint above text, there was an iceberg below. We'll see the same with any major symbolic framework she uses for Fantastic Beasts. I doubt there'd be open references to the procession, though New World Order will surely be heard. And hints that constellations will come like we've seen with Credence and Maledictus, through names like Corvus or linked images like the Hydra Snake. So we've got to have our wits about us. So what do you think? Have you picked out your magical astrological sign? Would you be a Niffler or a Centaur? Personally, I'm hoping the demigods is shining brightly. Please share your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next video where I'll explore more what this magical zodiac may mean for Newt and why it has to be him. And please check out my newest release, Fantastic Secrets Behind Fantastic Beasts, the video book. I've linked to it in the description below. Until next time.